Hello friends, today we are going to study about hydrophobic interaction. Hydrophobic interaction is the interaction that helps nonpolar molecules to aggregate in the presence of water. So never think that hydrophobic interaction is the interaction in the absence of water. I know many students have this doubt that hydrophobic interaction happens in the absence of water, but it is not the case. Hydrophobic interaction always happens in the presence of water. Why? Because the word hydro means water. And phobic or phobia means fear. That is fear of water. Correct. So to fear of water, the water should be present over there. If water is not there, then what to fear of? So to fear of water, water should present there. So always hydrophobic interaction is the interaction in the presence of water. Correct. Now what happens when a nonpolar substance is added in water? normally when there is no nonpolar substance in the water what happens the water molecules are in a bond with other water molecules as soon as any nonpolar substance is added in the water in the medium then they starts surrounding the nonpolar substance from all direction correct in the absence of nonpolar substance all the water molecules are in bonded form with each other as soon as a nonpolar substance is added in water, this starts surrounding around the nonpolar substance. Correct? Now, why they do that? Or what is the thermodynamics behind hydrophobic interaction? In depth thermodynamics, we will study when we will study the chapter of thermodynamics. Here, we will only study the thermodynamics which is related to hydrophobic interaction. Here, we have two nonpolar substances which is surrounded by 12-12 water molecules. Now, to surround a nonpolar substance with water molecules, two phenomena happens here. The first phenomenon is bond breakage. Why? Because this water molecule, which is now bonded with a nonpolar substance, in the absence of a nonpolar substance, it was actually bonded with other water molecules. So, this bond has to break to form a new bond. Correct? So, first, phenomenon which is happening is bond breakage and the second phenomenon which is happening is bond formation. Bond breakage between two water molecules and bond formation between the water molecule and the nonpolar substance. Clear? Now the thermodynamic is delta H. Delta H is known as enthalpy. Enthalpy means energy content. Delta S is entropy, which means randomness. And delta G is free energy change. In this case, when two nonpolar substances are individually surrounded by water molecules, delta H or enthalpy is negative in nature. Why? Because as I said, two phenomena is happening here. One is bond breakage, another one is bond formation. So more energy is required to form a bond than to break a bond. Correct? That's why the energy, the total energy goes down and it is negative. Entropy is also negative. Why? Because the nonpolar substance is not free. It is surrounded from all sides by water molecules. So it cannot move freely here and there. So it entropy decreased. Now both the value is negative. So the free energy changes positive. Why? Because the formula is delta G is equals to delta H minus T delta S. So here delta H is negative minus again delta S is negative. So negative, this negative negative will become positive. So now the value is this negative and positive. So what will be the sign for delta G? It depends upon this is more or this is more. For example, if delta H is 4, so we will write minus 4. Suppose delta S is 2, so we will write plus 2. The answer will become minus 2. If we reverse the numbers, we'll get minus 2 plus 4. So the answer will become plus 2. Okay. That means the sign for delta G depends upon delta H and delta S. But one more thing to note here is T. That is temperature. So temperature also plays a very crucial role in determining the sign for delta G because here when we wrote so, the value for delta S, but delta S is not 
alone here. We have to multiply t also here. So because of the t, the number will increase. The final result of this multiplication will increase. And this number can be more than 4 also. So t plays a very important role in determining the value of delta g. When both are negative, that is delta h and delta s, when both are negative in nature, then if t is less than delta h by delta s, then only the reaction will be favorable in nature. To be a favorable reaction, the value or the sign for delta g should be negative. If delta g is negative, that reaction is thermodynamically favorable or spontaneous in nature. If delta g is positive, the reaction is non-spontaneous in nature. Understood? When both the value for delta h and delta s is negative, then if t is less than delta h and delta s, then the value of g will become negative. If both are positive, that means delta h and delta s both are positive. In that case, if t is more than delta h upon delta s, then only the reaction will be favorable or spontaneous. That means in this condition only, the value or the sign for delta g will be negative. Understood? We'll learn this in depth more when we'll study the thermodynamic chapter. So here what is happening? When the nonpolar substance are not aggregated in that case delta h is also negative delta s is also negative and the reaction is non-spontaneous in nature that means this type of interaction is not thermodynamically stable so what happens is this starts aggregating the non-polar substance starts aggregating now when they were not aggregated in that case individual non-polar substances were surrounded by 12 water molecules here 12, here also 12. Now when they are now aggregated, they are surrounded by 10 water molecules. That means now less water molecules are required to surround them. So when less water molecules are required to surround them, that means some water molecules are now again free to form bond with other water molecules. So enthalpy increased. As because now they are surrounded by less water molecule, their entropy also increased because now they can move little freely as compared to when they were individual. In this case, delta G became negative. Hence, this reaction is spontaneous or thermodynamically favorable. So that means whenever we add any nonpolar substance in water, they will tend to aggregate with each other. Okay, because that aggregation is only thermodynamically favorable. The examples given are thus oil and water. So when we add oil in water, oil droplets cannot remain dispersed in water. They'll aggregate at one place. When we add plastic bottles or any kind of pollutant in water, which are non-polar in nature, they'll aggregate. Similarly, in biological system, protein folding, uh, the renaturation of DNA, all these depends upon temperature. That at what temperature they will be thermodynamically favorable or not. For example, at low temperature, protein folding occurs. At low temperature, DNA renaturation occurs. Okay, next. What are the factors that affect hydrophobic interactions? The first is temperature. Already we learned now only that hydrophobic interaction is a temperature dependent interaction. At very low temperature also the interaction will be weak. At very high temperature also the interaction will be weak. So an optimum temperature is required for an effective or significant hydrophobic interaction. Next is chain length. More the chain length means more hydrophobicity. That means more hydrophobic interaction. For example, a 18 carbon chain long fatty acid will aggregate better in water compared to 10 carbon chain fatty acid. Linear or branch, linear is more hydrophobic because of their proper arrangement. Compared to aliphatic aromatic, aliphatic is more hydrophobic. Dielectric constant, more the dielectric constant, more hydrophobic interaction. Why? Because we already studied when any substance is having high dielectric constant, that means it can store more charge. Storage of more charge means there won't be ionic interaction in that substance. So more the dielectric constant of any substance, more charge it can hold, the less will be the ionic interaction. If less is than ionic interaction means more will be the hydrophobic interaction. Salt concentration, this also we 
studied that more the salt concentration that means ionic interaction decrease there also because salt have a shielding effect so they shield ions and because of which ionic interaction decreases hence when we add salt so it increases the hydrophobic interaction okay now one question from my end for you all the question says a protein in 100 mm kcl solution was heated and the observed tm that is melting temperature was 60 degree centigrade when the same protein solution in 500 mm kcl was heated the observed tm was 65 degree centigrade what is the most probable reason for this increase in tm let me give you a hint here what it is saying the tm was 60 degree centigrade when kcl concentration was 100 mm when kcl concentration increased the tm also increased correct that means increase in salt concentration increased the stability of the protein kcl is a salt solution increase in salt solution increased the stability we already studied what is the function of salt concentration what happens when we increase salt concentration correct so you have to apply that reason only and you have to answer the question so do let me write in the comment section if you found the video informative then please do like share and subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for the next video notification till then stay safe stay healthy